Hi guys, Chef Wukan here today. How are you? I hope everybody is ready for the holidays, did all your shopping. Well today, I'm gonna to show you an easy dish using the most favorite seafood you could think of, shrimp. How can we have shrimp? Shrimp cocktail, linguine with shrimp, um, shrimp scampi, broiled shrimp, stuffed shrimp, and basically, that entails the majority of dishes that they use with shrimp. But today, I want to show you a great dish called Thai Shrimp with Basil. Okay? It's very unique. It has a very clean flavor. It's not very heavy with a lot of gravy in it. And you're going to love it. just want to let you know that I had gone to Costco. I bought the package of shrimp. And that is rated as 13, size 13 to 15. Basically, 13 to 15 means 13 to 15 pieces of shrimp that fit one pound. So obviously, the shrimp are huge, jumbo. And at Costco, it comes out to be around 60 cents a shrimp, which is a great bargain. All right? So I just want to let you know that when you go shopping for shrimp, don't follow the name Jumbo Shrimp. Go by the number. The higher the number, the smaller the shrimp. The lower the number, the bigger the shrimp, okay? And basically what I did was I defrosted the shrimp and I took off the shells. Now, here we have the shells. You may think, what are you gonna do with the shells? Well, in Asian cooking, we always try to make use of all the things that we use in terms of preparation. These shells, you add some hot water, boil it, let it simmer for an hour, or half an hour, and you're gonna get a nice shrimp flavored broth. So you have beef broth, you have pork broth, you have chicken broth, now you have a shrimp broth. So you might have to add a little sugar, maybe a little soy sauce, but essentially your ramen noodles will never taste the same by adding the broth. So basically take the shells off, save it, and freeze it, okay? Here are the shrimp. The shrimp from Costco has already been deveined and they're huge, okay? Basil. Well, we have the traditional basil. And basically that's very good, you know, when you have, you know, making tomato sauce, you know, you want a little basil flavor, but this is Thai basil. It's a little bit different. Uh, it's very, very strong, strongly scented, and it adds much more flavor to the dish, okay? It has a lot of flavor. It's very unique, right? It's a sweet, um, mellow flavor, but mellow in the sense that it's a little stronger mellow than the typical basil. We have garlic, but we have uh, ginger. Here's a piece of ginger that we're gonna slice, right, thinly and dice it. Ginger is good for your system, for your insides, and I would recommend that if you do buy ginger in the store, make sure that the skin, the outside, is not shriveled. If it's shriveled, it's been laying around for a while, and it's not as fresh, okay? So basically, it's good for your inside. It's good if you have indigestion, uh, diarrhea, you know, I mean, it just helps your whole GI series inside you, okay? Garlic. Delicious garlic. This has already been shelled. This makes it easier. I'm going to smash it for you. So you're going to get a combination of the ginger and the garlic flavor. What else do we have here? We have um, Shaoxing wine. It's a wine that you we use a lot. Um, but if you don't have Shaoxing wine, you can use regular wine. We have oyster sauce. That will give you a little bit more of a sweetness flavor, although it's mainly made up of all salt but it does have a balance of salt and sweet together. We have um, dark soy sauce. Now, it's sort of like soy sauce, but it really doesn't have as much flavor, but it's used mainly for um, coloring, right? Then you have brown sugar. We have brown sugar here. And we have a slurry solution. The slurry solution is a combination of cornstarch and water together. This will thicken it up. So basically what we're going to do here is I'm going to show you how to prepare 
the ginger, and the garlic. Okay? So just bear with me. Okay, so what I have here is a Pampered Chef Sankoku knife. And this is very sharp. This is guaranteed, lifetime guarantee here. And my friend introduced me to Pampered Chef. So one of the presents I got was this Sankoku knife. Very sharp. And remember that a sharp knife is always a safe knife. Okay? So what we're going to do here is we're going to lean the edge of the knife against my fingers. But we're going to use our fingers in a, in a claw shape so that the edge of the knife will rub against your knuckle. This ensures that you won't get cut. And we'll take long, thin strokes. Go all the way, and just cut. Now, if the knife's very sharp, you don't have to really much worry about putting a lot of pressure on it. So, um, that makes it even easier for you. Then we'll take the slices, and we'll chop it up. Now you can pile it on top, but make sure you have a firm hold on it as you cut. So has everybody finished shopping? Christmas shopping? Holiday shopping? Jeff Bezos will love us because Obviously, everybody's probably shopping on Amazon, a one-stop shopping deal. Okay. So as we um, chop up the ginger, we'll set it aside. You need to know that the preparation in Asian cooking is takes the longest time. The actual stir-fry is just a couple of minutes. So if you're looking for a gift for a lifetime warranty, try the uh, Pampered Chef Sankoku knife. And it has its own little sleeve too. Okay. Here's the garlic. The garlic is a little different. We don't have a, uh, a garlic presser. And I, I'm not an advocate for it because whoever invented these gadgets, I don't know if they really use it themselves, but it requires a lot of pressure to get those that goes garlic through the little holes, okay? Then they give you a little um, cleaner that goes into the holes to clean out any stuck garlic pieces. Chef Wu has another technique in terms of uh, how do I smash the garlic. This, this is a 100% carbon steel, high carbon steel knife. It's one piece, okay? So you don't have to worry about it when you start smacking things that the handle's gonna fall off. This is one piece. Unless you let go of it, it won't go any place. So it's as flat as can be. And basically, I take the uh, garlic, lay it on the uh, board, make sure it's stable, flip it over. One. Two. Put it together. And then... Now, you may say, what kind of, what could be another substitute for garlic? Well, if you really don't have fresh garlic, but I always encourage you to go fresh, you can use the garlic powder, all right? So here is the uh, Thai basil, and we'll just take off the leaves. I already gave it a quick wash. It has a very unique flavor. It's a very clean flavor. We throw out the stems. And we don't chop up the leaves. We'll put it in whole. We're not going to chiffon on it.
and we'll put it on the side. So we have the garlic already chopped and smashed. We have the ginger sliced. We have our Shaoxing wine, oyster sauce, fish sauce. Fish sauce gives the dish a little bit more of a saltiness, more so than soy sauce. It's a little bit more pungent. Oil for the wok. The slurry sauce. And brown sugar. Now, if you don't want to use brown sugar, you obviously can use stevia. Right? Or regular table, white table sugar. I prefer the, um, this sugar, cane sugar, brown sugar, because I feel it has more flavor. It's more, it's, it's less refined. Okay? And we have the shrimp. Okay? Now, the shells, I put in a bag, I put in a freezer. Right? If members of your family are asking what the heck this is, you just tell them you're going to make it for a future broth. And they'll really appreciate it. Now, you might have to add a little soy sauce, a little sugar to it. But once you do that, it's going to be so delicious. Okay. So we finished preparing. Now, we'll start stir frying. How you doing, guys? I'm back. We're ready for wok cooking. Obviously, I have a butane stove. You know, makes it easier. I'll start it off. This is a high carbon steel wok, right? It may look dirty, but this is not really dirty. This is more like um, seasoning of the wok. It's like the cast iron uh, stove, no, the cast iron pan. You have to season it to prevent it rusting. And basically it creates a, a non-stick surface every time you use it, right? So I've been using the wok a lot. <clears throat> it has a little bit more of a color. And that's a good thing. So don't throw it out. Uh, basically, you're not going to get the stainless steel color anymore, but every, every time you use it, you know, you're going to have a natural seasoning done to the pan, which is a natural non-stick surface, which, think about it, right? When you have the pans at home that you use, and I recommend using a medium uh, heat non-stick pan because any higher may wear down the uh, coating a little bit further. And it's a coating, so God knows what kind of chemicals are in it, right? So this is natural, so you don't have to worry about it. The wok is heating up. Always get the wok heated up first, right? Don't just put the wok on, then add all the stuff. It's not going to do it. There's a methodology, a methodology involved here, all right? So get the wok heated. Now we're going to add the oil. I feel it, right? Then we'll add the garlic. And we'll add the ginger. And you never, ever let it stay in one position. You always constantly uh, uh, stir fry it. Because if you keep it in one position, it's going to start burning. So we'll keep it, you know, a little low, medium, right? Just for demonstration purposes. You're going to let the garlic and the ginger fuse with the oil. So it's going to release the flavors into the oil. That adds to more flavor, all right? Now, we'll add the shrimp. Now shrimp, <clears throat> we're so used to overcooking shrimp that we, know, we don't know any better. But shrimp, you have to get at the right, the right stage where it's not too well done and it's not too underdone. It's just perfect, perfectly tender. So you wanna look at the shrimp. These are huge shrimp, right? So it may take a little longer. But you want it to be bright orange. Now, what we'll do is add the Shaoxing wine, add the fish sauce, add the oyster sauce. All right? So we'll combine it. Yes, where the Thai basil, any vegetable that is used in cooking is always added last, right? It's added last because it cooks the quickest, all right? So, we're stirring it. We want uniformity, uniform cooking on all the shrimp. 
But remember, you don't want to overcook it. So, you know, in the middle, you may just take a piece to see how it tastes. If it's too well done or it's too underdone. Now we add the brown sugar. So the taste combination of this dish is a balance between salty and sweet. All right. Once you have that balance, you can have a perfect dish. The basil just adds a little bit more flavor. Okay. So in Chinese cooking, we always are concerned with the presentation. So sometimes whether it's beef or shrimp, you know, the gravy may look kind of bland, right? So, you know, we have the dark soy sauce that will give it a little color. Alright, now, now we take the Thai basil. Throw it in there. You can smell it. You smell that aroma, the basil now combining with the oyster sauce, the sugar, the fish sauce. Okay. Now if you guys like gravy, we, we have the slurry sauce, right? This goes over a nice bed of white jasmine rice, very aromatic. You know, this is just beautiful. So you got a little ginger, you got the garlic, you got sweet, you got salty. You got the basil, and you don't really have to cook that fat that much, all right? So we're gonna add a little sauce, because I love sauce, and you may love sauce too. So the slurry sauce may stick a little bit. In other words, the cornstarch mixture may settle to the bottom and the water may float. So you might have to mix it up a little bit with your finger. Add a little bit. You don't want it to be too thick. You want it just thick enough that it will stick to the shrimp. Okay. Make sure you bring all the sides, all that flavor. We may add a little bit more, a little bit more flavor. Okay. A little bit more spicy sauce. And that's it. You're done. This took less than two minutes. Okay. We'll shut it off. So now we have one scoop of rice. We'll take some of the shrimp, put it on the side. This is Thai basil shrimp with aromatic jasmine rice, right? So delicious. Using my trusty chopsticks, and I'll take a little bite. The shrimp is super tender, the way it's supposed to. We should be here to try some. Mmm. Delicious. So I want you to remember one thing. Chef Wu can, you can too. It's that simple. Right? There's no secret. There's no difficulty. It's just a matter of knowing how to put things together. Preparation takes the longest. Once you have the preparation done, then the stir frying just takes a couple minutes. So my motto has always been, Chef Wu can, you can too. All right. I want to wish everyone a very special holiday. I want you to be safe. I want you to eat healthy. And for 2021, tune in to us. For more YouTube videos on Chef Bukan's kitchen and offering how to make certain Asian dishes. All right. So thank you very much. Go to my website, www.chefbukan.com. That's Wu with two O's. All right. Thank you. And there'll be other recipes coming soon. All right. 
Thank you very much and have a great weekend. Bye-bye.